What's up everybody, it's Justin with Shock Therapy and today we're going to show you how to install our dual rate spring kit on a Polaris General. The things that you can expect from this kit, more plush ride quality in the dual rate zone and a stiffer spring assembly once you get into the big bump stage, jump landings, G outs, especially where you need the support. Between the two of these systems you're going to get the best ride quality possible with this spring kit. So what's very cool about this spring kit, compared to most other spring kits on the market, is that it is a true dual rate spring kit, meaning that you have an upper and a lower spring. The two spring rates combined gives you a very lightweight spring rate, which is extremely plush. As you compress the system, get into a bigger bump or jump landing, the crossover ring in this kit will engage the lower spring which then can as much as double the spring rate. You might go from 120 pounds per inch to 300 pounds an inch to 350 pounds an inch. That progression in the system is what makes a true dual rate spring kit function the way it should and give you the most plush ride and no bottoming out. So knowing a little bit about how dual rate works and can give you the plush ride and good resistance when you need it, that works very well with the General because when you're using the General for utility reasons, you're carrying a lot of weight, maybe in the bed, the dual rate system gives you a plush ride at ride height but can support the extra weight when you need it. That's not typical for most spring kits. It's absolutely standard for our spring kit. And as always with our spring kits, you're going to gain ride height with this kit without sacrificing any ride quality. And our springs are made in the USA and they are warranted lifetime. So as always, we recommend that you take all of the parts from our dual rate spring kit and unbox them and lay them out on the countertop. We want to make sure that you have all of the components that you need. So the dual rate spring kit for the Polaris General comes with eight coil springs, four spring dividers, four plastic spring adapters, four aluminum spring adapters, as well as eight crossover rings, four in the rear, four in the front, and their respective O-rings to make them a silent crossover ring. As you can see, we've grouped all of our parts together so that they are set with everything for the front of the car and everything for the rear of the car in two separate spots. The reason is you're going to be starting by installing the spring kit with everything in the front first and put the car on the ground, and then you go to the rear and start with everything in the rear and wrap up the rear. As with all of our dual-rate spring kits, the springs will come marked from us as to where they are going to go on the vehicle. If you take a look at the top of the spring, this is a front lower spring, FL. In the rear, you've got a rear upper spring, as well as a rear lower spring. Make sure you set these aside in the order in which they're going to be installed, also in the direction front to rear that they're going to be installed. The first thing that you want to do is set your car on a flat level surface so that it's easy to work on and easy to set the ride heights when you're done. Ahead, Next, jack the front of the car up to where the front tires are about a half of an inch off the ground and grab the tools you need to remove the front shocks from the car. Remember before you pull the front shocks off the car that the reservoir on these shocks are clocked to the rear of the car. This makes this shock specific to the driver's side and the other side specific to the passenger side. When you reinstall the shocks, make sure that the reservoirs are close to the firewall when you do it. When you start disassembling the front shocks from the car, it's easiest to start with the bottom hardware where the shock connects to the control arm. The tools you're going to need are 15 millimeter sockets and wrenches, depending on whether you're on the front or the back side of the bolt. With the lower bolt removed, you can go to the upper bolts they are also the same size hardware, which requires a 15 millimeter wrench. Once all of the hardware is removed, you can pull the shock from the vehicle and go to the workbench for the next step. And the first thing to do is lower the bump stop from the bottom of the head of the shock on the shaft. Then compress the spring assembly, remove the lower spring retainer, and then remove the stock spring from the shock. Next, we'll break loose the factory preload nuts with a hammer and a screwdriver so that they can be adjusted for the next step.
Hey, bitch. With the shock on the bench, the first thing you're going to do is grab the black plastic spring adapter in the kit and install it on the shock so that it sits flush against the bottom of the preload rings on the shock. If you forget to install this first, you will not be able to install it with the crossover rings on the shock. Now, grab your crossover rings and install them on the shock. The crossover rings are installed with the flat surfaces touching each other and the recessed groove surface facing upward and downward on the shock. The recessed groove is where the orange o-ring sits when everything is installed and completed. Install the preload rings onto the shock. Your front shock measurements are two and a quarter inches to the bottom of the black plastic spring adapter. Crossover measurement, seven inches to the bottom of the crossover rings where the orange O-ring sits. The measurements are taken with the tape measure butted up against the black top cap of the shock. These are your starting points. This will get you an initial setup on the car. Once these are installed and on the car and everything is settled, We'll measure the ground clearance to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Perfect. Show me your cross there you go. Once your preload and crossovers are set, put the shock back into the spring compressor and get ready to install the correct springs for the front shocks. With the shock and the vise, install the upper spring first. Grab the plastic spring divider and install it with the long end facing the bottom of the shock. Since the shock is upside down in the vise, the long end is going to face up. Now grab the lower spring, install it, compress the system, and install the aluminum spring divider supplied in the kit. Then install the factory lower spring retainer. Release the spring compressor slowly while you line up the spring retainer with the lower loop of the shock. Completely release the system and grab the shock and go to the front of the car. Repeat this process for both front shocks. Once you have the springs installed on your front shocks, it's time to go ahead and put the shocks back on the car. Make sure that the reservoirs are clocked towards the firewall and that you're installing the correct shock on the correct side. Go ahead and start with the upper hardware first and then put the lower hardware into the shock as well. With the front shocks installed and the hardware left loose, go ahead and drop the car back onto the ground. With the car on the ground, don't worry about the ride height that the car might show you. It's probably set up in a bind. We'll settle the car by driving it back and forth after the rear is done. Now it's time to install the spring kit on the rear of the car. First, jack the car up to where the tires are half an inch off the ground. Getting ready to remove the shocks on the rear of the car. The hardware is the same as the front, so the tools that you're going to be using are 15 millimeter wrenches and sockets. Just like the front of the car, start with the lower hardware first, where the shock connects to the control arm. Once you've got the hardware loose, you use your toes to lift the tire and pull the bolt out easily. Then you can go to the top of the shock and remove the upper bolt too. With the rear shocks off of the car, place the shock in the spring compressor. Lower the bump stop on the main shaft of the shock with a screwdriver to get it out of the way of the lower spring retainer. Compress the spring assembly and remove the factory lower spring retainer. Remove the spring assembly, remove the shock from the spring compressor, go to the workbench. Now install a plastic spring isolator on the top of the shock on the bottom of the preload collars. Install the secondary rate nuts that are supplied in the kit. Make sure that the secondary rate nuts are installed with the flat surfaces touching each other and the recessed grooves facing up and down on the shock. With the tape measure butted up against the black head of the shock, the preload should be set at two and three quarters of an inch to the plastic spring isolator. Crossover measurement should be set at six and a half inches 
the bottom of the crossover rings where the O-ring is installed. With the preload and crossover measurements set, you're going to install the shock back into the spring compressor and start to install the coil springs. Install the upper spring first, spring divider second with the long end of the spring divider facing the bottom of the shock. Install the lower spring and make sure that the ends of the springs are touching the plastic spring divider on opposite ends of the spring divider shown. Compress the spring kit and install the aluminum spring adapter that we supply in the kit with the lip of the spring adapter facing and touching the coil spring. Next, install the factory lower spring retainer. Loosen the spring kit while allowing the lower loop of the shock to line up with the lower spring retainer. Repeat the process with the other rear shock and now you are ready to install the rear shocks back on the car. With the spring kit installed on the rear shocks, remember these shocks are clocked according to side. The reservoirs are facing forward. When the shock is installed, the reservoir should be facing closer to the cab of the car. Install the upper bolt first, install the lower bolt second. When installing the lower bolt, make sure you use your feet to lift the tire up. You will still be leaving all of the rear hardware loose so that we can set ride heights easier later on. With the shocks installed and the hardware loose, go ahead and lower the car down on the ground. Now that your shocks and springs are installed on the car, it's time to settle the suspension so that you can check ride height. There are a few things that are extremely important. One, drive the car back and forth at least 50 to 100 feet, hitting the brakes and the throttle as much as you possibly can to cycle the suspension. Once you've done that and brought the car back to a flat and level spot, check ride height with the driver in the car. Make sure that you measure the front ride height at the bottom of the car, lower control arm, rear control arm mount that is the closest to the firewall. From that point to the ground is the measurement that you should be checking. The rear ride height should be checked from the center of the car at the rearmost point from the skid plate to the ground. The ride height that we are looking for on the general spring kit is between 12 and a half and 13 inches off the ground. The rear of the car should be one half of an inch less than the front. So if the front measures 13 inches, the back should be 12 and a half. All of these measurements are with the driver in the car. So make sure you find someone else to help you measure. If you find that the car sits too high or too low for the ride height that we're looking for, remove the shock and adjust the preload collars accordingly. Preload collars can be adjusted half of an inch at a time, which will affect the ride height by one full inch. After adjusting the preload again, install the shocks, settle the suspension, and measure the system with the driver in the car a second time. Hopefully you've got it nailed and the ride heights are spot on. It's time to check the crossover height. In the rear, we are looking for approximately two inches of gap between the top of the black plastic spring divider and the bottom of the aluminum crossover rings where the orange O-ring sits. In the front, we are looking for about one inch. Once you've gained the proper crossover height, go ahead and tighten the crossover by jamming the top crossover against the lower crossover with a hammer and screwdriver. Now that your ride height is accurate, tighten the preload nuts on top of the spring by jamming the top preload nut against the lower. At that point, tighten up all the hardware and you're good to go. Now that your spring kit is completely installed, you have all of your ride heights set, your crossover heights are checked. The things that you can expect with our spring kit, more plush ride and more resistance in big G outs. Things that you should keep in mind as you drive your car. The springs are brand new. They will take a set over the next 100 to 300 miles of trail ride, make sure that you check your ride heights and see if the car has settled up to a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. If it has, take a minute, measure everything, 
and reset your ride heights. This set will happen one time and one time only. After that, the springs will maintain that ride height for the life of the spring, and as I said before, they are warranted for life. Once you've driven the spring kit, you're going to enjoy it, and if you want to see more out of your car, we have more available. You can send your shocks to us for a ride improvement system. That includes all of the internal modifications to the shock, piston, valving, oil, other machine work that makes the car ride incredible. That system is paired with the spring kit that you already own. You do not have to change anything to do that. So if you want more from your spring kit, you can pair that with our ride improvement system at any time. You do not have to buy another spring kit to do so. You will enjoy the improvement immensely. We hope that this installation video has helped the process of installing your spring kit. We really hope that you enjoy our spring kit and the improvements that it gives you. For more tutorials and installation videos, go to shocktherapist.com or go to Shock Therapist on YouTube for more videos. Mm -hmm. So what Chris is about to do, he and his sweet mullet, as well as his cop stash, which is very hard to duplicate, and he is very proud of it. When installing the springs, if you feel that you could possibly do it better than Brandon with his manly stash, please go ahead. But we want to see some video of you doing it better than he does. Rock the stash. Nobody does it better than Brandon.